I'm going to explain what needs to be explained, what used to be considered Marxism 101, about why it is that our Western capitalist economy is crashing and burning. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to do some math. And I hate math. And you know why I hate math? Because I grew up in America. I went, to, I went to public school in the United States of America. So I am going to, at risk of embarrassing myself, because math was never my best subject, I am going to do some mathematics here on the board for you to explain the problem. We very much enjoyed Caleb's speech. So if you are creating a product, right? if you're a factory owner, you're making a product, you are going to need the material through which that product is made, the, you know, the manufacturing materials. So that'll be A. The simple equation you put forward to explain the crisis of overproduction and the falling rate of profit. And you're probably going to need to transport the product to where it's sold. That's B. It broke down where your money goes. You're also going to have to pay your labor costs. Labor costs are represented by C. Explanations of those concepts that people are able to understand. Then when consumers purchase the product, they're going to pay a final price. And that final price is D. However, there's a problem with that. I like the fact that he framed it that way to make it very clear. Which is that the capitalist can't change how much A costs. He can't change how much B costs. So the, the profit of the capitalist can only be extracted from the value put into it by the worker. And this is the basis of Marxism, the understanding of surplus value. I've never seen it explained so simply anywhere. I've never been able to explain it that simply. So C, the labor value, is divided. You have C1, which is what the worker actually gets paid. And then you have C2, which is the profit that the capitalist makes. And it all adds up to D, which is the final cost of the product. Now, the way people in the United States who talk about Marxism generally talk about this is they say, well, this is unfair. They say the worker is not getting paid the full value of his labor. But they're missing one of the most important points, which is not just that it's unfair and then people argue, well, what about the employer? He put up the money, doesn't he deserve to be? That, that's all a distraction. Because the important thing to understand is this. C1 is always going to be less than D. The wages paid out to the worker are never enough to buy back the product that he produces. There is always more products created than there are wages paid out to the worker. And this is the built-in problem of capitalism, the problem of overproduction. And it is always there in the capitalist economy. It never goes away. And they have invented all kinds of crazy mechanisms to try and deal with the problem of overproduction. Part of the reason that the U.S. government has purchased billions and billions of dollars worth of cheese only to bury it in a cave in Springfield, Missouri, is to deal with this problem. It is an ongoing present problem, and it's a problem acknowledged by most capitalist economists. John Maynard Keynes said the problem was underconsumption rather than overproduction, but he was pointing to the same problem. The military-industrial complex in the United States is a, an effort to deal with this problem, to keep spending going. There's all kinds of mechanisms that they've invented to try and resolve this problem, but it gets worse. What is the capitalist always trying to do? He wants to maximize the amount of profit he makes. And one of the main ways they do that is with what's called labor-saving technology. Get rid of workers and replace workers with machines. As they eliminate workers, from the process of production, as there's fewer and fewer workers involved, as machines take the place of workers, the role of C in production decreases. There's a little bit of a problem with that. As, as C goes down, C2 also goes down, right? As C decreases, C2 also decreases. And as the role of the worker in production is reduced, the rate of profit that the capitalist makes goes down. And this is called the tendency of the falling rate of profit. Only human labor creates value. And this is something that Adam Smith acknowledged. This is something some of the popes even acknowledge. Human labor creates all value. And so when you reduce the role of human labor in production, the amount of value created decreases, and the ability of the capitalist to extract surplus value also decreases. So this causes the capitalist to have to churn out even more products, 
because he's making less and less of a profit on the overall product. He's making less and less of a percentage, so he has to churn them out. So this problem of the worker never being able to buy back what he produces and more products being created than are necessary, this problem becomes exacerbated. And this points to what is understood to be the deeply irrational nature of the capitalist system. Communism will save America.